should we or shouldn't we be wearing sunscreen when it comes to sun exposure, getting outside, getting that sunlight on our body, into our eyes to help with circadian rhythm, to help with vitamin D levels. What do you guys think? So I completely understand the importance of getting the sun into your eyes and onto your body so that you can absorb some of that sunlight and you can improve your vitamin D levels, which is an important hormone. Some people, you know, have heard about chemical sunscreens and how the chemicals get into your bloodstream, which is a real thing. And for that reason, I personally avoid using chemical sunscreens. I don't need it. I don't want them. A lot of people have irritated skin and their eyes get really irritated from this stuff. So a lot of people have switched over to using mineral-based sunscreens and the mineral sunscreens that are out there have gotten so much better. The formulas used to be quite horrible and they used to be really like terrible textures and they would leave like horrible white casts. And then it kind of changed over the years where they got a little bit better, but they're really expensive. And now finally we have some that are great that have great ingredients and they're more affordable. So I'll share my two favorite ones later on in the video. Obviously, these are just the ones that I'm using that I find to be affordable with great ingredients and really nice formulas. The truth is many guys especially don't wear sunscreen anyway and this is just a fact of life. At least in the United States, I don't know many men who wear sunscreen even if you try to teach them to do that from a young age, it's not the easiest thing. They are not often many guys aren't into skincare or sunscreen. Okay, so that's one thing. If you are somebody who is doing any type of skincare routine that involves any active ingredients from vitamin C, glycolic acid to, you know, if you're microneedling, if you're nano needling, whatever you're doing, if you're doing something to your skin, if you're using tretinoin or retinols, obviously you must wear sunscreen on your face or you could put yourself at risk for damaging your skin even further than if you weren't using any of those products. Most people would tell you to wear sunscreen. You know, if you're light skinned, certain skin tones and certain ethnicities are more susceptible to getting skin cancer. And so if you have a lot of freckles and you're light skinned, kind of like me, you may be more at risk. If you have many family members who have had skin cancer, or even a couple of family members in your immediate family who have had skin cancer, I believe your chances of getting it are higher. If you've had skin cancer in the past, your chances of getting it are much higher. And so I have had many of those things. Every single family member in my family has had skin cancer except for my sister, and I hope that she never does. Some of the skin cancers that you end up getting are ones that have developed from sun damage that happened years prior, like 10 years prior. And that makes sense in my case. So I've done a couple of videos in the past. You can check them out if you're interested in my skin cancer experience. I had skin cancer on the back of my neck a couple of years ago. It was just a small bump. It kind of felt like a zit, but it just didn't go away. And it felt a little bit weird. It looked like the color of my skin. And that little tiny bump turned into a big ordeal, a very big ordeal. They cut out such a large chunk of skin in order to clear the margins and make sure nothing else is going on there. For whatever reason, the guy, the surgeon who did it, told me to remove the stitches myself. I know it sounds absurd. It was likely a result of my location. He should have just told me to go to my local hospital, which is an hour for me, and have them help me, but instead he suggested that I remove them myself. Now you guys, a lot of you out there have had some rough experiences with medical personnel and may understand where I'm coming from. When you do find somebody who's skilled and who knows what they're doing, it's absolutely amazing and I am so fortunate and grateful, but I have had many unfortunate and negative experiences. So just for that reason alone, and many of you have had similar problems, I would highly recommend doing whatever it takes to avoid having to go in to get medical care, you know, because the likelihood of things going wrong, it's gonna increase the more things you have to get done. So for that reason alone, please think about this. Now, when it comes to skin cancer, mine was removed. I ended up having problems. My stitching was messed up and things opened up and I had the nastiest looking scar. I also went somewhere and had multiple other things removed off of my back. The one that you need to really, really be aware of and be more cautious of is melanoma. This is extremely serious. And if people are brushing this off, that is very concerning because melanoma can spread extremely fast and it can be deadly. It is a very dangerous form of skin cancer. And that is something to definitely take seriously when it comes to this topic of sun exposure and sunscreen. Now, recently I had something suspicious on my back. It grew 
to twice the size of what it was previously and it was scabbing and it had like a very rough texture. It took weeks for me to get in just to see a primary care doctor to help me and he did a um, shave biopsy. And you guys, all I can say is whatever you do before allowing any medical person to cut into your skin, ask every question imaginable. You can never ask too many questions. I didn't anticipate a problem and there's a bit of a problem and I'm not trying to complain. Listen, this is absolutely nothing compared to people who are dealing with ab actual melanoma. Mine was not melanoma, thankfully, it was very fortunate. When it comes to what he did, it was going to be a shave biopsy. It's very easy. The mole is just cut off with a scalpel. And in my past experiences, it was cut off flush with the skin. But this time he ended up using some silver nitrate. And I'm not sure how he did the shave biopsy because I couldn't see it. I don't know if he gouged it out like a deep indentation or if the silver nitrate he used burned through my skin, which is what somebody else told me likely happened. But I ended up, and I still have a scar on my back, it's still healing and it's been weeks and weeks and it still looks just as bad. I'm gonna show you a photo, it's gonna be graphic. I'll show you right here what it looks like right now or what it looked like a couple weeks ago or a week ago. So it's weird because the part that he cut out was actually close to the size of like a pencil eraser, but the size of this um, scar or this thing that's healing right now in the gouged out area is many, many, many times larger than the actual size of that mole. I don't know what's gonna happen with it. It looks really not great. Normally I can handle looking at photos of things even if it's on my own body and it looks horrifying to me, but this one, I was so horrified when my son showed me some photos of it and uh, we were concerned that it looked infected. I tried getting a hold of the doctor or nurse again who did this and he was quite delayed in responding and I ended up talking to like paying $30 to talk to a nurse in a video and sent him a photo and he thought that it was healing like okay but he was also kind of baffled at why it looked like that and so much was gouged out and I believe he thought that it was related to the silver nitrate like burning the skin. I'm not quite sure you guys. So if there's any nurses watching, feel free to share your opinions on it. Hopefully it will heal and like even out, but it just adds to like the battle wounds on my back. So for me, my perspective on sunscreen is that it is important to protect yourself from the sun. It can ravage your body. And if you are an unfortunate person to get skin cancer on your face, you guys, it is really, really bad and like traumatizing because they can't just carefully and sweetly cut it out. They need to like gouge out the area around it and there's no other way to put it nicely. And so if you have it on your nose, if you have it anywhere on your face, there could be like a gaping hole. Please don't look this up. Don't look up any photos. I've accidentally seen some photos and I know somebody who had had this on their face and it's exactly what I'm saying is what happened. And that is traumatizing. When it comes to sunscreen use and when it comes to people saying how important the sun is, I totally get both sides, I get it. I feel like there are good formulations out there such as mineral sunscreens like the ones I have here. But also I feel like if you go out earlier in the day when the UV is less strong, less harsh, then you could get some sun exposure. And some people might wanna be selective. If it were me and I was trying to get some sun exposure, I could leave my legs exposed. My legs have had very little sun exposure compared to the rest of my body. And I feel like I'd be totally fine with that. And even my arms could be exposed, even though I do already have a lot of freckles and sunspots. If I want to, I could definitely leave my arms exposed without sunscreen. But I personally have to apply it all around here and on my face. I wanna do that to try to help prevent um, skin cancer. And if you're a guy especially, but women too, please also, if you're applying sunscreen, apply it behind your ears and on your ears because this is an area that less people realize um, it's a very common area to get skin cancer, especially for guys and especially if they're driving and this part is exposed to the window. Um, my brother and my dad both had skin cancer here and I know my dad had to get a lot cut out. Like they really hack you up when they're doing this. They do these procedures all the time because skin cancer is so common and they are just like in and out. You're getting in and out like an assembly line, unfortunately, depending on where you're going to. And it can be really a horrible experience. And I would not wish it on anybody. The whole thing is very stressful. So for that reason, I just wanted to share some of my thoughts on it. Here are some products that I personally like, you know, because of the price and because of the formulas. 
And because they're mineral sunscreens, they're not using any horrible toxic chemicals. They are using zinc oxide as their main protector of your skin, which is great. Actually, zinc is very good for your skin. And if you have issues with acne, it's especially helpful for the skin. So this one right here is an SPF 30. It, the brand is Good Molecules and it's their sheer mineral sunscreen. I think this one, even though it looks like a small bottle, it lasts me a very long time. A little goes a long way. It is a beautiful, amazing formula. I think this will work on any skin type. If you have, um, let's say, drier skin, I think this one is better. And this is Pipette Sunscreen SPF 50. This is a really, really great product. So if I need extra coverage and I'm gonna be outside a lot more, I'll use this on my face. And this has more of a white cast, but if you blend it in really well, I feel like it does go away. And I use this on my body as well. It's a great product. So that's all I have for you guys today. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the importance of sun exposure and whether or not you wear sunscreen. I know a lot of people don't wanna bother with it. It's like a hassle, but if you've had issues of skin cancer, it's a bit less of a hassle to have to go through putting on a little sunscreen. It doesn't take very long. So with that said, I hope you guys have a great weekend and take care.